Yeah, that's it. All right, guys, welcome to Mental Health Monday. Today we have Logan Anderson back in the building for all strong fitness. So I'm going to pass it over to him and he's going to give us an introduction on our theme today. Sweet. All right. So um, thank you all for coming and um, taking some time to just uh, learn a little bit more about exercise and fitness. Uh, Seth, you mentioned, you know, we there's a lot of stuff you already know, and um, some of this might be rehashed. Some of this might be some stuff you know, but I think it's right. always a good thing to um, I, remind ourselves on and reiterate. This is why I, I this is why I love mental health because I actually um, actually I'm an ambassador for a uh, mental health organization or nonprofit, I should say, um, here in the Manhattan area. Um, I just put it in the chat, so if you want to check it out, um, it's a nonprofit organization that I work for. Um, her, um, the family, well, the family sister got, um, got me as an ambassador. And so I was sworn in as an ambassador. And, uh, and so I do charity work for, um, that foundation. So I raise money from home during, um, so I do gaming, um, through Twitch. Um, if you, I don't know if you know what Twitch is, but I, I do live streams on Twitch for her charity. And so all the money I raise for her charity or her foundation goes back to the foundation organization, um, and so all the money that I raise helps her foundation get, uh, helps kids and adults with like medication for like depression, anxiety, um, suicidal, like, you know, um, problems and stuff. And so, um, but yeah, I, I do charity work for them. Um, I do, I do get on meetings with them occasionally about um, the charity, how much we've, how much we've raised. And so I do, uh, I do get on meetings with them a lot. Um, to you know, check in with them and how much the organization, how much money the organization has been raised. So, but if you want to check it out, I mean, it's a nonprofit organization, and so again, I love it because it was uh, it was started in honor of a girl um, Katie, named Katie that I went to high school with that um, committed suicide. Beth, yeah, Beth, I love you, but let's talk about this at the end, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you, Seth. Seth I think. Um... That's some pretty awesome stuff you got going on. And all I can say is um, need more people like you doing stuff like that, because if we did, the world would be a lot better place very, very quicker. So that's super awesome. And um, you can appreciate mental health. So, you know, um, everything, um, how important it is for literally anyone, um, any age. It's it's something that is always important. And that's going to be something I'm going to talk about today. Um, specifically when it comes to um, sports and exercise and confidence. So um, these things can all go hand in hand when it comes to mental health. And um, hopefully I give you a little different perspective on things, uh, potentially give you some things to think about and take into your lives um, when you're working with um, other Special Olympics athletes, uh, maybe some of your family and friends. So um, as Aaron mentioned, I own All Strong Fitness, which is an inclusive fitness and health company. I teach guys like you um, about fitness, health, wellness, all the different things, um, and just try to make it more accessible towards everyone. Because, um, you know, for fitness and health, everyone needs it, as I mentioned. And this is, of course, um, super important with the special needs community, um, because you guys often get neglected. People don't really think about you a lot. So um, hopefully this gives you guys a little bit of a takeaway. So anyway. Uh, Mental Health Monday. Um, we all know confidence when it comes to being, being confident. This is a huge part of mental health. Um, just a question, and I'm going to mute myself for a second if anyone wants to answer. Um, what does confidence look like? When you think of a confident individual, a confident athlete, um, just somebody out in public, what does this look like? It can be a physical thing. It could be how they speak, how they hold themselves. What does confidence look like? I think confident means to be a leader, to be a role model, and basically just be who you are. I love that. I absolutely love that, especially the last part, being who you are. Um, a huge part of confidence is not really caring what other people think. You are going to have numerous situations in your life where you need to simply go out there, 
do what you think is right, whether it's somebody as an athlete for Special Olympics or you're just doing stuff in your community like Seth, your work um, with the mental health nonprofit, you're going to be doing things that um, you're just going to have to be yourself, be your person. And ultimately, at the end of the day, that's going to be the most important thing. So, yes, being a role model. Absolutely, too. That was a that was a very perfect example. I promise we didn't set this up beforehand. That was excellent. Very good. Any other ideas? What does being confident look like? Um, so I'm from Illinois and I do a special Olympics for basketball and sports and just be yourself, um, talk to your teammates and then, and then once you lose, respect the other team. I love that. I love that. And you you encompassed a part I didn't even think of. Um, being respectful, a huge portion of being co- confident. Um, if you're respectful, again, it goes back to being who you are and being a good human individual. So um, when you're respectful, it allows you to be confident in that way, too. I really like that. I really like that. We got everyone dispersed across. We got Illinois. Um, he's working in was New York. I'm like, we got everyone from everywhere. I'm from Iowa. I, I didn't mention that. I'm from Eastern Iowa. So, um, this is a nice hodgepodge of people. Yeah, I, I do. Um, um, I do the basketball, I do softball, and then pre COVID, I did volleyball. And then since COVID, we're not doing the volleyball anymore. For sure, for sure. Well, that's awesome. Well, that's awesome. You guys are involved. I love it. Yeah. So I'm I'm from Manhattan, so Manhattan. Yeah, Jeez. I'm from Topeka, Kansas. I love New York. Good place to see. That's a total side note. We'll save that till the end. Um, okay, so a uh, couple of things that I wrote when it comes to being confident, um, feeling good about yourself, feeling good about yourself in the capabilities and different things that you can do. Um, again, whether it's sports outside of life in your work or just talking with your family and holding yourselves up as an individual, you need to feel good about yourself. Um, and this is a large part of what confidence looks like. If you look at a confident individual, you can tell immediately they feel good about themselves. Um, somebody who's not confident, they're probably going to walk around maybe with their head down um, shoulders for they're not, you can just tell there's something that's not quite there. So, um, being confident, feeling good about yourself, uh, chest out, shoulders back. That's a huge part of it. Just looking the part. Um, a big thing we mentioned, not being self-conscious about what others think about you. And this is very, very hard to do because a lot of times in our lives, we want to please other people and we, we care a lot about what other people think. And of course, there is a time and place we want our teammates to care about us. We want our family to care about us. But what becomes a double-edged sword is when we start caring about other people in our life that don't necessarily care about us. There's going to be a lot of people. uh, Maybe we're out at the grocery store. uh, Maybe we're at a Special Olympics um, meet and they're not quite as comfortable and accepting of individuals with special needs. So when they kind of stigmatize you and maybe talk to you a little bit differently, that might kind of shoot down some of your confidence. And um, this is, again, just something that um, we need to remind ourselves to try to work through and try to uh, not be self-conscious about those people because you don't want to know those people anyway. They're not worth your time. Um, Another thing when it comes to confidence and what it looks like, uh, doing what you know you can do without second thoughts. Um, So whether it's your capabilities as a speaker or somebody teaching somebody in sports or life, um, maybe you guys have hobbies you like, um, I, I'm don't particular, well, PC building, that's a good example. You're confident in PC building, you know, your skills, right? And you go into that gung ho. I'm not confident in PC building because I have no idea what the heck to do. So I wouldn't be confident, but you know, your strengths and weaknesses, you know your strengths and weaknesses. So we're working on our strengths, um, excuse me, working on our weaknesses, but knowing our strengths and being confident, being confident in those strengths and putting them forward um, to our lives. And then um, kind of a side note, the last thing with this, um, this helps 
whether you're confident or not. So what I mean by that is um, you can go into a situation and maybe you are not quite confident in your sporting event you're going into. Um, maybe you're feeling uneasy about how your training went. Uh, your team's not quite clicking. Um, but if you still go in and do what you know what you can do, that's basically all we can do at the end of the day, doing what you know you can do, being confident about those things. Um, okay, so kind of briefly looked over um, confidence, what it looks like. Does anyone have any comments, questions, concerns, or just um, any other ideas that came up in their head when it comes to confident individuals? And, and then one last thing, just respect for to the web, even though you get called for nothing and still respect the call. And that happens a lot. That happens a lot. I know I get frustrated. Um, I play hockey recreationally um, on a uh, plastic rink. So we run around, we hit a ball around. And I get frustrated sometimes with the referee, but that's a huge part of um, not just confident, but being a respectful athlete. And that'll get you a long way in life, um, not just inside sport, but outside sport. So I love the respect factor. Um, everyone being respectful. I love it. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to being confident, um, we kind of talked about what it looks like, but why is this really important? Why am I even here talking about this? Anyone have any ideas? Why is it important to be confident? Any thoughts? This can be about your personal life. It can be how it might affect others. Why should you be confident? Do you guys ever have negative self-talk about yourself? Do you ever do something in your life where you're like, man, I could have done that better. Or you get down on yourself and you're like, man, I'm not, I'm not all it's cut out to be, or I'm not even a good athlete. Does anyone, anyone experience that? Sometimes, yes. If, if I miss my three points and it should go in all the time. I get upset myself, not, not my teammates, no. Absolutely. And you, you probably start doubting yourself, right? You doubt yourself. Um, so I think a big portion of confidence when it comes to sport is to limit that negative self-talk. Um, this is a never-ending spiral that can happen very, very quickly. And basically our minds, they start thinking about all the different things that are wrong with us versus um, all the different things we're actually good at. So if you're able to limit that self-talk and negative um, thoughts about yourself, that's going to improve confidence greatly. So that's probably um, one of the biggest portions of this that I um, just wanted to bring up. Any other ideas? Mm. Why should we be confident? Why is it important? How often do you guys try, um, try new things in your life? How many of you like trying new sports or trying a new activity? Okay. So if let's say you are about to try that activity and you are not very confident in doing it, how do you think that activity is going to go for you? Do you think you're going to enjoy it as much? Probably not. Yeah. Do you think you're going to go into it probably doubting yourself again? Kind of having some more of that. Oh, yeah. Talk? Has a disappointment. Yeah. Regret. 100%. Absolutely. All those things for sure. So um, one of the biggest things, um, another big thing is it helps to keep moving you forward in life. Um, when we're living on basically planet Earth, uh, there's a lot of cool experiences that we can try for ourselves. And I think going um, into those experiences, knowing that you're not going to be perfect, uh, knowing that you are still learning and still new to this is, even though at the time, kind of counterintuitive, you're going in saying, I don't know much about this. And that's actually being confident in simply um, taking note that you don't know much about it. And there's a whole nother side of confidence when it comes to that. Um, the people who are faking confidence will act like they know 
everything about the situation. You might have had a teammate like this who comes on to any sport and they act like they know everything. Um, they act like they're, you know, the best in the world, but then they get on the field and they don't know much about it. Um, and this is simply because they lack the confidence to say, I'm not good enough yet. And that's a huge thing to be able to admit. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. This is how we learn. This is how we move forward. Um, it's how we get better at things. Um, I will say for myself, if I wasn't confident enough to do um, certain things in my life, I would be way far behind. I would be way um, basically anything. So when it comes to like maybe going to college, um, maybe trying new sports for myself, let's just say trying new foods. If I'm not confident in those different things, then I'm holding myself back from where I could potentially be as an individual. So being confident in short, helps keeping you move forward, helps you try new things as an individual, and also just helps you push yourself. Um, did that trigger anything? Any other ideas? Why might being confident uh, be important for us? I think because it has to be a better person. Absolutely. I was going to say, I was going to say, be confident in what you do. Yeah. Why, why should we be? Be confident in, like, how you do your job at work or something or, um, like, foundation you work for? Absolutely. And what let, – let's, let's dig further, though. Why should you be confident about that? Um, how much, like, how much um, the foundation, like, cares for what you do? Absolutely. So if you're confident um, in your abilities of what you can provide for them, it shows in the long term because they're going to be benefiting from you being confident. So Seth, you know the different things that you do for your foundation. Derek and Tommy, there's probably different um, stuff that you guys do in your life. Maybe you are um, helping out with a Special Olympics event or just helping a teammate do something. If you are confident with those specific things, it not only helps yourself mentally, but it's going to help others around you um, because they know that they can count on you, um, that you're giving them your best foot forward, for sure. For sure. I really like that. Okay. Um, so the last thing when it comes to this is performing the best that you can. Um, so why is confidence important? Because at the end of the day, the only thing that you can focus on is what you can do. You can't focus on your teammates. You can't focus on your coach, the ref, anything. You need to be confident in your abilities. Um, because as I mentioned, that's the only thing you can really control. Um, so if you're ever frustrated about things, um, if you know the game's not going your way, just think about how can I still maintain my confidence? How can I maintain my cool, be respectful, and get through the rest of the situation? Um, this is much easier said than done. Um, but sometimes it just takes a couple deep breaths, coming back from the moment, whatever we're doing, and um, looking at it from the outside in. Um, does anyone have any questions on that section? Mm -mm. Cool. I like it. Any comments? Just any ideas? I think this is a really amazing thing. <laughs> I agree. And it's, it's, um, it's something that you don't, people don't talk about it enough. And it, uh, it makes you, I don't know, you can truly appreciate life when you look a little bit deeper and especially with confidence. If everyone's confident and they do, they get out in the world and do stuff in a confident manner, just think about the world. Think about the world, right? Okay, so mental health and confidence, we've kind of talked about this um, a few times, but I want to bring up a term that I like to use, and um, this is something that's really prevalent in my life, so don't think that because I'm talking to you about this, that I don't experience mental health issues almost every single day. Um, I want to say that again and again, every human being has some type of mental health concern or different thing that they're constantly navigating through. Um, this is 
totally normal and part of being a human being. And you should never feel um, upset with yourself. You should never get down. Um, Take note of how you feel and just embrace this. We all go through these things. So kind of a side note, but important to mention. So the term I wanted to talk about is a term called imposter syndrome. Has anyone ever heard of this? Nope, never heard of it. So imposter syndrome is something that can apply to your daily life. It can apply to sports. It can apply to exercising and fitness, um, work, etc. It's essentially when you are fairly good at a task, you might even be considered an expert at a task. Maybe you guys are captains for your sports teams. Uh, maybe you're somebody who's really good um, as like a team lead on one of your jobs. Uh, maybe you just get people asking you a lot about life advice. It doesn't really matter. Um, but at the end of the day, you might be looked at as kind of a top uh, performer in a respective aspect of life. And what happens with um, people who are a top performer, they go through these times where they, they ask themselves, why am I a top performer? Am I a top performer? Am I really good enough? Um, should I be here? Should I be talking about these things? Am I qualified? Do you guys ever feel like that when you're like playing a sport, um, or doing stuff in your life? Do you ever feel like, why would somebody ever pick me? Or why would somebody ask me questions about that? Do you guys ever doubt yourself like that? I, uh, actually get that a lot on my Twitch streams. Like I have new viewers that come in, you know, cause I'm doing a charity stream for the nonprofit all the time. Um, like every other month or like every twice some no it's like every every year I do the charity stream for her foundation and I get viewers that come in my Twitch stream and you know they're new and you know they do the you know the command for her you know her charity you know what it means and you know they you know they'll ask me hey you know what you know what's case you know what's case way what's it all about and so um I and so I sent, you know, I, I, um, I send the command to the chat and um, they read the, you know, they go to the website and they read about it and they're like, that's really awesome. You know, what, you know, what you do, you know, for this charity, you know, this foundation. And they're like, and then they ask me like, how, how do we get, you know, how can we help out with, you know, this chair, you know, with this foundation, you know, and so they're, and so I give them the donation link and, um, we've actually had, I've actually had a few, uh, I've actually had a few of my, uh, my chat mods actually donate. Um, and I've had a couple of new viewers that have come in and donated so Seth, over. Seth, when you're talking, um, what are, what are some times when you're doing all that? Do you feel kind of like this imposter syndrome or do you doubt yourself when you, when you're doing that? Oh, I feel, no, I feel happy that, you know, to tell them, you know, why, you know, why I do it and you know how you know how it makes me you know makes me happy that I'm you know working for this foundation and you know absolutely do you ever feel a time when you're doing that where you're like man like this is this is kind of a lot going on and like I'm not sure if I'm I'm not sure if I'm doing it right I'm not sure if I'm being um proper uh I'm not sure if I'm representing things the right way do you ever like times a doubt with all of um i actually i actually uh, i actually do at times um like sometimes i feel like you know i'm not doing enough for her foundation that i need no. to do more to you know keep her honor going other than you know raising money and but yeah there's times that i feel that i feel that way that like you know i feel like i'm not doing enough for the foundation and- absolutely that's that's totally valid and i appreciate that that comment so that's exactly a prime example Um, you know, you're doing so much, um, and you probably know deep down you are, but in the back of your mind, that imposter syndrome keeps in, you know, like, am I doing enough? Um, am I qualified to do more? Um, am I somebody who should be, um, in this role? Like, why am I here out of everyone? Um, this is something that happens with people who are very high performers. So if you guys feel that way, just know you're, you're a high performer. You're thinking big, you're doing big things. Um, and if you don't feel like that, that's okay too. That means you're probably pretty dang confident, but just know if this ever happens to you in your life where somebody maybe puts you down or they question you, um, or you just have a lot of internal kind of demons where it's like, um, 
am I really good enough to do this? That happens to everyone. So that's imposter syndrome. Um, it's very, very common. It's something that's happened um, in my life. It's currently happening in my life right now. It happens basically every single day. Um, it's a huge part of being confident. It's kind of embracing this idea that um, we're still working through things and um, yeah, imposter syndrome. So that's something you'll probably notice now a little bit more. Um, and if this ever happens for you, I think going and talking with somebody who knows you well, knows all the things that you can do and provide is super important. Anytime I'm going through these times of doubt and what I can provide to the world and um, how good I am as an athlete, how good I am as a human being, I'll talk to somebody like my family, uh, I'll have close friends, um, and I'll simply talk to them about it and say, I'm kind of doubting myself right now. Um, and immediately they'll list off 50 different ways that they've um, know that I'm not an imposter. Um, and usually that helps. So that's kind of a takeaway you guys can use in your lives um, for that too. So kind of the whole um, overarching thing with this, um, tying it all together. So exercise and sports uh, when it comes to confidence. So we know confidence is an important um, we know, um, general ideas of what confidence might look like, but how does it apply to exercise and sport? So being a special Olympics athlete, you guys are involved in some different sports. Uh, maybe you exercise and do some fitness on your own. And I think this is a really good time to kind of hone in some of that confidence and hopefully build it. Um, so you can apply it to your lives outside. Um, one of the first things I would recommend if you are unsure of a sport or an activity that you can do that's um, inclusive and allows you to participate without being um, kind of put down or stigmatized, find something that you enjoy. And this is a good thing to remind ourselves for any type of activity in life. Find something that you enjoy um, because if you do find something you enjoy, you will be much likely. Um, more likely, I should say, rather to stick around with that specific activity. And the more you stick around with that activity or sport or exercise, you're going to get better at it. This is just through trial and error. And um, through this, of course, when you get better, you're going to build some confidence in that sport specifically. Um, so this is why finding a sport um, that you are good at is important. If you don't like something, um, or you find a sport that you don't really enjoy, let's say you're really good at running and somebody's like, come play basketball with me. And then we're like, eh, I don't like, do you, Derek, you like running? Yeah. Yeah, heck yeah, man. I love it. I love it. I do all sorts of running events, like the 400, the running long jump. Oh, and shoot, the, track and field then. Yeah. And, and I stuff. love basketball and stuff. Derek, what's, Derek. A sport, what's a sport that you don't like particularly? Um, when it isn't there. Because I almost do all running events. Fair enough. What about outside of track and field? Swimming. I do okay. swimming as well. Are there any sports that you haven't done before? Um, bocce. Okay. So... Um, do you think you would enjoy bocce as much as you enjoy track and field? Probably not that much. Okay. I've, so I've never, I've done, I've never done bocce either. I've, I mean, I've seen what bocce looks like. I know it's like, uh, what's that game called that you, oh, what's it called? The, like the things you put in the ground or whatever that like the, oh, uh, um, what, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. I just know it's I'm the things you put in the ground. Playing. Croquet. Is that it? Okay. Oh, croquet. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, I know it's like croquet. So, but I've never played it. So, I, yeah. So, <laughs> so I mean, anyway, back to the, back to the idea. So, um, let's say for example, um, we're trying to pick a sport for you to help build your confidence and mental health. You probably wouldn't pick bocce ball because you know, maybe you'd enjoy it, but you don't enjoy it as much as track and field, right? So track and field, you're able to do, you're able to participate simply because you enjoy it. And because you enjoy it, you're going to stick with it, build skills over time. And if you build skills over time and get better at it, 
you're going to be more confident, right? So, right. Super, uh, yeah, for sure. Versus bocce, maybe you'll do it once and you're like, oh, geez, um, I'm not too cut out for this. And then that's where that imposter syndrome comes in again. You're like doubting it. Okay, I'm not good at bocce. So am I really cut out to be a special Olympics athlete? Of course you are, right? At the end of the day, we all have our different sports we're good at. Got to find something you're good at and be confident with it. Um, what are they? What are they doing, bocce? Like what? Like what? What is it basically? Like what? What are they doing, bocce? Exactly. I haven't seen it a lot, Aaron. You might be able to answer it a little. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a YouTube search away for you, my friend. You got your uh, souped-up computers. I would uh, Google that when we're finished. Um, I've seen bocce ball pits and I kind of have a general idea, but, um, yeah, I was, I was like, I, I was like, I've seen it, but I'm like, I don't really know what they do. Like, I, 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 I think it's like an arena or something. Like, it's like, look it up and report back to us. Okay. Fair enough. I like that. I like that. So when it comes to exercise and sports, um, a big part of life, as I mentioned, is learning new things trying out different things and um, just moving in general. Um, So moving in the right direction. And if you're consistently learning new things and new tasks um, in that respective sport that you enjoy and know you want to stick with, this is going to build confidence. And the cool thing about this is it's really a, um, a positive feedback loop. And that's fancy term for every little thing you do to improve yourself will make you improve yourself even more. So let's say, for example, you guys go into a soccer practice. Let's say you guys all like soccer. If you don't, that's totally okay. (laughs) If you actually do, then that's great. Um, Let's say you go into soccer and you don't know much about it. And day one, they teach you some drills. And you come out and you're like, wow, that was tough, but I learned some drills. And I'm going to go home, practice them, and get better. The next practice you come and you're better at those drills, you practice them, you got a little bit uh, more in tune, you're working better with your team, you build your confidence a little bit right there, right? That was only one week. Then you can build on those skills, add a little more complexity to it. Maybe you start passing to your teammates. Um, Maybe you're starting to run some plays. It's going to be tough at first. We all know this. But through time and repetition, again, because you chose that sport that you enjoy and want to get better at, you build a little more confidence and keep building that confidence, keep building the confidence. It's it's very addicting because the second you start building more confidence, you're like, man, learning new things isn't that bad. Failing a little bit isn't that bad. That's what's helping me improve as an individual and get better. Um, So. I think that's a super um, kind of different way of looking at things. Um, okay, so when you pick those different exercises in sports, you're building confidence in all of your abilities. Um, and this is usually looked at as a physical way. So, you know, you get stronger, you get faster in your different sports. Um, but as we've kind of mentioned, with all of this, the physical and mental plays hand in hand. If you are getting better, Um, If you're building confidence in your abilities um, through physical activity, that's going to make you more mentally strong. And the more mentally strong you are, you're going to be able to push yourself a little bit better. Um, You're going to be able to get stronger, faster. So it's really a a never ending cycle, kind of that positive um, feedback loop we just mentioned. And this is one of the, the coolest things that I don't hear getting talked about enough is Improving your confidence in sport allows you to improve your confidence outside of sport. And what I mean by that is if you um, work on your different physical capabilities, um, you get faster, um, you get stronger, um, you're building some confidence in there. You're going to come out of that practice session, that game, a whole new different person. Um, you're going to go into your daily life after that, your job the next day, and you're going to have your head held high because you're doing super good stuff on the sporting field. Um, And then you come into your job, um, you come into your different aspects of life, your relationships, and you're more confident in those. And you're more confident in those. So then you go back to your sport and you're like, man, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm, 
I'm crushing it in life. You I'm know, I've got some good relationships. Yeah. It's a never ending play off each other. So what you do in the gym, on the field, being confident and building it in there will help you outside too. I have one example. Um, when I used to work at a senior living community, I worked with this elderly lady who did not have a lot of strength. Um, she could barely, barely walk on her own without a walker. And one of the things I did with her is practice walking without a walker. And this scared her literally to death. Like she took super small steps, but I shadowed her the entire way. And we worked through that. And um, when I did this with her, we got done and she's like, I didn't think I could do that. And just that little bit of time in the gym that we did that exercise, she then went into her normal life and actually tried it on her own in a very controlled manner, just going like across um, the kitchen to her chair. So that stuff we did in the gym uh, played on her life outside of it. And this can be the same for you. So that's just an example of something you can take away. Um, one of the last things I wanted to mention is to pass this on to others. Um, one of the best ways that you can help everyone uh, being confident is to assist individuals who aren't confident and giving them this reassurance that I'm giving you guys this can be the same thing for everyone in your life. Um, there's going to be people who come on your sports teams or like, man, I'm new to this. I, I don't really know what to do. And being there as a buddy, being them as a mentor, um, as a special Olympics athlete and reminding them that you were there at one point, you know exactly how they feel and um, helping navigate them, reminding them of these different things that I've taught you guys can help them to then help others. So we're trying to help everyone. Everyone's helping everyone to help everyone at the end of the day. Um, so big takeaway points, um, focus on yourself, finding activities that you can enjoy. Um, this will help a lot in improving your confidence. Um, and when I say activities, I'm referring to like health activities, like going out for runs, doing special Olympics events, but this also is outside of it too. Um, doing something like, um, say PC building, for example, or, uh, maybe you guys, I don't know, you have little side projects you like doing, you like building different things. Um, you like, I, everyone's got their hobbies, right? Doing those things and being confident in them will help your life outside of those activities. Um, go in situations confident, whether or not you are actually confident or not. Um, and this <laughs> sounds kind of crazy, but Please, when you are doing anything, even if you're kind of doubting yourself a little bit, still go in and just say, I'm going to give it my best shot. I'm going to give it my best shot because at the end of the day, that's all I can do. That's all I can do. And you'll find if you go in with this frame of mind versus I hope I don't mess up, you're going to do a lot better in all your sporting events, all your different things. So go in positive, even if you're not confident, do your best to try to act confident. Um, that's kind of it for the, uh, the program today. Um, if you guys want, I'm going to put in the chat below, um, fitness.org. You can go check out my website. I post a lot of cool stuff on there. I have some workout videos. And, um, if you want to even just, uh, find my contact information on there and you can always ask me some more questions and, um, yeah, so that's all she wrote. Any questions on any of that? There's a lot of info, but Hopefully you guys took something away from that. Anybody have questions? No. It's like the whole fake it till you make it idea, right? Sit there and tell yourself that you're ready and prepared for whatever's ahead of you, even if you're not, because it tricks your brain. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised too. You'd be surprised. You probably are ready for it. You just are going through that imposter syndrome again, where you're like, ah, am I? You are. Just go out and do it. And if you fail, everyone does. We're all failing. You pick yourself up and you keep on going. Exactly. Goodness, I got it myself. All right, guys. Well, if you don't have any questions, let's give Logan a big round of applause. Good Thank job, you. Morgan. This was good. This was good. Yes. Huh? I said thank you for telling us.
<laughs> Thanks, Tommy. All right, Logan, is it about time for dinner for you? I think so. Yeah, it's been. Uh, <laughs> I don't blame you. I, uh, All right, well, yeah. Thank you so much for coming on, and I'm sure that we'll see you pretty soon. So yeah, it's definitely. A fair, yeah, we'll. It's a fair, I'm out of it, I'm out of it.